Hello everyone, this is Eth Dragon, and welcome back to another episode of Fire Emblem Heroes. So today we are doing Ether Raids replays. So my um, <laughs> defenseless streak for three days finally ended with four. So we're gonna start from the most recent one and just go backwards, even though. Some of them are in previous videos, I just want to have like my own reference of them in specific videos. So anyways, without further ado, let's get started. And we're just going to turn on basic animation. So this team, I haven't seen this yet, so that's a few arm. Okay, yeah. Seems like this team could do it, especially with that Mia. Um, Although there might be some problems against, like, maybe against Legendary Cena. We'll see what they did. But this is pretty much how you tackle my map. So they're doing it right, at least. And they're HP creeping, so they don't get affected by my uh, structures at all. Let's see what they do here. And I'm HP creeping Nino versus the Panic Manor. So she's not getting panic blood. So of course I would have there's a couple of things I could do differently. But um the thing is I need to be able to handle different instances and the main punish is indeed um Whatchamacallit. It. So now we're panic Floyd, so we're probably screwed here. Oh, we missed the kill by one. That hurts. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Veronica's uh, Leaf Scalp screwed us over in the end there, but that's uh, not too bad. Because if we quickly, because I have a bit of time, I have about an hour. <laughs> it's not, the video is not going to take that long, but like. I have my heavy trap here and my bolt trap here to prep up vantage on Nino. But I almost feel like it's better to do something like this. I don't know though. Because this is like really uh... <laughs> um, the idea is a lot of people are going to use a range unit to take this out. So... No one's, no one's going to go melee because getting out of there is impossible, basically. Um, if you use a melee unit. So I guess the idea would be if someone use a range unit, they get stuck here so they're forced to go in. So this person basically kind of went an all-in gamble pretty much, I think. If I remember that replay properly. But I basically... Like, play mind games with people and make them think that, um, this trap's real. Because, you know, it's the logical thing. Like, I, I do do it over here because this is a common approach point against my team. Because you could just go straight in with a melee unit as well. Like, you could use a range unit and a melee unit to wreck face. So, that's why I have that there. Otherwise... They could just attack, dance, maybe like repo out, or they could go in for another kill. Because there's basically no punish unless your unit's really squishy. So this would be a really strong um, heavy trap spot. Of course if it actually procs because in the instance of the replay they're completely h besides the fact they did get whittled down though by the uh, bolt tower that's something but the hp creeps a little a little tough that's the tough thing to handle um i'm kind of thinking maybe i should do this but i mean it doesn't really matter um so yeah that's the thing with my setup it's really bad a few HP creep my structures, it's even easier. This team pretty much had an easy win. There wasn't much I could do. Uh, there's just a versus carrying panic ploy. So ironically here, Harsh Command's gonna screw me over. I don't know if 
I think harsh command is going to screw me over here. I don't quite remember what happened here, but... Like, it's not going to go well. So, yeah, Nino... <laughs> uses harsh command on Lucina. That's not going to do anything, man. So, I think that next time I should... I have harsh command unequipped now. So now this is just an easy win for them. Because they have tactics room up too. So... It's really just bad for my team. Bright Ninian is basically a wheelchair on these teams that can just simply take my team down. And I don't know if they intentionally did it, but pretty good AI manipulation there. Because if they didn't do that, there might have been some problems. So... Either that was just pure luck, or they actually use AI manipulation, and then I would approve, because that's... Stuff like this is where being able to know how to manipulate the AI is super critical. So it's it's definitely fine, they just basically got an easy win off me. And this person's back for revenge after I beat them on offense, and well... If you look at their team, haha... <laughs> Attack tactic, like I've already showed this in a previous video, like it's a pretty stacked team. So it's kind of no surprise that they would steamroll my team, but again, my team's engineered to troll these people. Because you don't want to exactly gamble that one of the traps is really real, because then that just screws your entire run. Of course, if you know that it's not real from like watching my videos and seeing my setup, then it's pretty trivial, but like... The whole intent of this is to get that debuff off and then Lucina can just get a future vision and basically annihilate most units that would try and win, so. So like if that trap was real, it wouldn't have mattered because Veronica just does not do any damage. That's the only problem. <laughs> and it's gonna pick up an easy win here. Like, this is a solid team. Solid offense. This person, I've already showed most of these matches at this point, so it's just, again, this team had everything you need basically to win on offense. Some good nukers, uh, good Ryan Brave Lynn check, and Veronica check as well. And Veronica, or just any sort of heal spell. So, like, this is kind of like why I need my, uh, this is basically why I need my trap there, because if I don't, I just get completely destroyed. That's pretty much it. So I don't know what exactly they're planning to do against uh, Blade Nino, but uh, <laughs> it doesn't quite work that way. And uh, pretty much they have to leave. I don't have Wings of Mercy 3 on Ninian anyways, so it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. Nino almost pulled off a meme kill, but it didn't happen. Glimmer's not strong enough, so feels bad, man. This team is just like, yeah, this was back on my old legendary Lucina troll setup. I mean, it's kind of the same deal. Super stacked team. What could possibly go wrong, right? If you have a double repo stuff, you can really do things like that. As long as you don't activate heavy traps, because those can be a problem. So Panic Manor here is just going to basically screw me over. So ironically, the Close Counter Vantage build might not actually be really that good on offense, I mean defense, because if I want to be in Vantage range, I have to be in Panic Play range, and so I don't know. It's kind of a issue about that but basically this team can just go ahead and I don't know what exactly what they were uh, thinking there but I mean I get pick up a free kill which helps me out but yeah they're gonna easily win this one it's not hard to beat my team it might be hard to get all the defense structures I mean ether structures if you don't have the right team, but I mean, like, at this point, you probably, you've probably, if you've watched my previous videos, you've probably seen most of these. So it's just, again, me logging them in 
one specific place. Averse is just strong on offense. Um, there's not really much my team can do. Because there's, that was also an exact kill. It would have been really bad if she didn't one shot. So yeah, if they didn't damage Calc, that would have been a massive punish. Because she would have gotten danced and dealt quite a bit of damage. Not a crud ton, but then here they just uh They can't do anything to avoid Ninian getting wrecked to anyone. So <laughs> that's just uh, another easy meme on someone. And again, this is another easy steamroll. Like most of these teams I, I basically expect zero wins. My only goal is to <laughs> actually... My main goal is literally just to uh, make sure I can get a, maybe a kill. But unfortunately here, uh, I only pick up one kill because I don't have the damage output again. But I mean, it doesn't really matter. In the grand scheme of things. Again, Ninian's gonna make it a little challenging to uh, deal with these buddies. So, I kinda just do some running around trying to manipulate Bright Ninian, but he's going after Veronica. And because of my little blockade over here to the left, it's you gotta go through the middle and Indian's always in attack range and they don't have anyone who can do anything about it and they activate one of my traps so they just kinda have to go for the kill. But I mean, again, pretty solid. This team, kinda the same deal. This was, um, before I made a better setup to uh, punish flyers. But I mean, th this map is just so strong for flyers. I don't know what to say. But like here again, they they fall for the trap again. You've activated my trap card. <laughs> so that's literally all I do with this team. Try to get that one kill on someone who knows they can bait Nino for red unit, and then oh, voila, aha, get memes by future vision. Because it also removes panic ploy status and all those shenanigans as well. So it's really nice. It's a really strong assist. But it's also predictable for the AI as well, so it's feasible. And this healing tower is just clutch for this person. If they didn't have the healing tower, they would be screwed. But that's pretty much it. So, healing tower is pretty decent for stalling, indeed. Like, on my setup, Ver my Veronica has no way of healing, so the healing teller, when it's bonus next season, it'll just eventually be helpful long term for being able to stall like that, if necessary. And this was the former rank 1 player, so... I mean, it's... Sh at this point, I didn't design this properly. So I was supposed to put a structure here so the legendary Lucina would get um, future vision off, but I didn't recognize that early enough, so I thought the setup was decent, but it, it really isn't. Um, because I would be able to, to pull off the kill on that Ike of legendary Lucina, but um, unfortunately I goofed, so that's not an option. And here they just have tactics room so they can just abuse it and wail away at my uh, structures. And they have calf movement, so it's not much of a not much of a problem for them to get to my structures. And it's just an easy win from there, so another easy win for my opponent. And then this person just literally has one hard counter to my team, which is literally just bring a green tank. That's literally how you beat my team. Just bring a green tank and make sure you can tank Nino if you're not gonna panic player, which obviously he can. Of 
course, if you didn't one-shot, then Nino would have been a one-run KO because that's definitely normal. But, like, you just bring a green tank. Veronica doesn't have that much attack. Nino can't do anything if you can tank Nino. So it's just, like, it's a really easy win condition. And again, people using abusing tactics room, so that allows them to uh, do some things. So not entirely too sure what they were trying to achieve there, but um But they had to give up an ether structure. But Okay, my game crashed. <laughs> so I guess that's the end of the episode. <laughs> Thanks for watching. As always, this is Ether Dragon, and I uh, hope to see you next time.